What's going on, everyone? And welcome back into the Brendan Schaefer St. Louis Cardinals writer YouTube channel. We are talking here on Friday afternoon, the day after the Cardinals lose 7-1 to to the Dodgers on opening day. And wanted to get into a topic that I touched on a little bit at the beginning of B-Shafe Daily earlier today. So check that out. Episode 520 on Spotify, if you're listening over there. And on YouTube, it was the first video that I posted on Friday about Miles Michaelis and his commentary after the game, after losing to the Dodgers 7-1, to after Miles struggles a little bit, uh, unable to get through the fifth inning, goes four and a third, gives up five runs, a couple of home runs mixed in there as well, and how the topic of weak contact came up in the post game. And this is something that I think has been touched on, talked about, pontificated upon by some on social media, of course, in the aftermath of the game. Because, well, in a game where you give up two home runs, to be talking about soft contact or weak contact in the post game is something that is probably going to rub some people the wrong way. So I wanted to uh, play some of the audio, courtesy of Valley Sports Midwest, for you guys and react to it and then maybe react to some of the other quotes that um, didn't end up. I don't know if it ended up not airing on the television post game. I wasn't watching uh, after the game on Valley, so I'm not sure. But with what they put out on Twitter, um, the the quote that I saw a lot of, of of the beat writers out there in Los Angeles uh, that are covering the series, I'm not, I'm back in Missouri, but a lot of them were circulating this one quote in particular that also alluded to the weak contact. And so I want to read that for you and kind of react to it and give my thoughts as to whether this is really a big deal or not a big deal. Um, this is one that I did use the B-Shape Daily opening kind of theme music that I'm still trying to work into when I can... Uh, be able to use that. That I think that is YouTube approved, so we're good to use that on YouTube, but I can't use it on other platforms, and so uh, I'm still kind of working through that. That's why sometimes you see the opening and sometimes you don't, but um, this is not technically a B-Shape Daily. I won't put this on the Spotify or the Apple podcast feeds um, as far as the podcast is concerned, so that's all the more reason to make sure you're subscribed to the Brendan Schaefer St. Louis Cardinals writer YouTube channel because sometimes you'll get content here that you won't get over there. So the way you can do that, it's right in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen on this video. Click that subscribe button if you enjoy Cardinals commentary, Cardinals content throughout the season. And uh, for those who have been along for the ride with us this winter, uh, they know that in the offseason we were putting out some content as well. So click that button before we get going. We'd love to have you on board. Click like on this video and then go ahead and drop your comments below. Uh, don't be influenced by what I'm telling you. Put it below what you thought of the Miles Michaelis commentary uh, that happened last night after the game. So I'm going to go ahead and find this here on the the Valley Sports uh, Midwest feed and play a little bit of the clip from Miles Michaelis. I'm not going to play the whole thing, and not everything he said is going to end up in this clip. So you would definitely be, uh, it would be to your benefit to go read the articles from the writers that were out there covering the series to get the full context. But we'll try to break down some of the context uh, that may not show up to the naked eye in, in this video or just on some quotes that you may have read on Twitter. But here was some of Miles Michaelis' responses last night to the media. Uh, I don't think it's my worst opening day, um, but it's definitely not what you want. Um, you know, all jokes aside, I thought I made some good pitches. Um, just a couple I want back, you know. Um, a lot of weak contact there in the first. You know, sploopers kind of, you know, ball sneaking through the infield there, you know. Kind of hang with them, um, you know. Wish I had you know some of those home runs back. I think, you know, I didn't think Freddie hit is that good, um, but you know he got he got enough of it. Put a good swing on a on a pitch that wasn't very sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. That was a little bit of Miles Michaelis talking last night. I don't know. I don't have the context of what the the question specifically that he was answering there. But you see, you hear some things that I know Cardinals fans can can pick apart a little bit and say, look, you give up five runs. Are we really going to do this again? Talking about the weak contact or the soft contact. Um, that happened. Now, there was a little bit of that going on in the first inning. And as he alludes to later in this video, I don't think I'm going to play it because I don't know exactly where in the clip um, it ends up popping up. But he talks about the ball that kind of sneaks through the infield. And the Cardinals did have the infield drawn in. And this was in the first inning um, uh, on a hit that kind of extends that inning, allows a run to score because you're playing aggressively with the infield in. And a lot of commentary about whether that was maybe the right thing to do. It certainly wasn't surprising to me to see the Cardinals do that. Uh, as far back as I can remember under Ollie Marmel, this has really always been the strategy. Anytime that they can be aggressive to conceivably prevent a run from scoring from third, they're going to do everything in their power to do that. Less than two outs, they'll bring the infield in. 
And I can think of a number of occasions where that's kind of backfired on the Cardinals. It did in this instance. Now, if the infield had been at normal depth, do they get the play? Do they, you know, it's impossible to necessarily speculate. You can look at the play and, and say what you think would have happened, but they, they choose to often go infield in so that they would at least have a chance to either look the runner back to third, or if he's going on contact, cut the run down at the plate and uh, try and save the pitching staff a run there. But you're talking about the first inning of the first game of the season in 2024 and making that aggressive ploy to basically say, look, we can't afford to give up this run because we feel like, I mean, what it speaks to me is anyway, at a deficit in terms of what that lineup can produce versus what our lineup can produce. And so we're going to uh, make this aggressive play to try and keep it where it's at. But I feel like when you're down a run or two and it's not too much of a deficit just yet, as it wasn't in that case, to bring the infield in in the first inning when you've got a whole game yet to be played and it goes wrong, it can set maybe the wrong tone. And we talked a lot last year about how the offense maybe would take that 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 early kind of blow up by a starting pitcher and take it to heart and take it into the batter's box to where they maybe weren't. Um, again, it, it, it's this was a point of contention with Ollie Marmel last year because he would say, look, these guys are are warriors grinding it out. They're not going to, you know, just give in at bats just because there's a an early deficit. But I think it is a little bit of human nature. I've always maintained that if you're down early, that kind of takes you out of the game a little bit. It kind of takes the wind out of your sails before you really get going. And for an offense, it's like, hey, if you know you've got a big deficit, it can maybe be a little bit more difficult mentally to try to think about climbing that hill as compared to a small deficit or, or, or maybe being in the lead and being able to kind of have that momentum carry you to perhaps build on from there. So that's kind of the the discrepancy and the, the debate, if you will. But I just am not really a fan of having the infield in. It's kind of a separate issue. Uh, at times, you obviously should be doing it. But at that spot, I would have thought, man, if you can just trade the out for the run, that might be a willingness that I would have. Um, or, you know, potentially you you do get a ground ball if you play it. Don't play in. Just play medium depth and don't concede the run necessarily. And if it's a hard contact kind of thing, you can go home. If it's soft contact to somebody, maybe you just take the out at first. But in the situation, and it didn't really spiral into a big inning in this case because only two runs came around to score. But what so often happens, and I can think of a, an obvious example, was the playoff series a couple of years ago against Philadelphia when the Cardinals seemingly had game one on on point. Uh, Helsley was in, and then the, the the thing started going off the rails. But you had a ground ball that gets by, I think it was Edmund at second base, where it was just outside of his outstretched glove, but he was playing infield in to where if he had been at medium depth, you probably trade the out for the run, and maybe you don't have the massive deficit. Maybe you're playing for extra innings at that point, and the Cardinals said, look, our best chance is with Helsley on the mound, and we're going to try to win it here by being aggressive defensively. But I look at that and go, you know, the way that was trending in that moment, in that inning, it didn't seem like the all-or-nothing approach was to my to my preference, which, again, you know, it was to the Cardinals, and they they did the thing they did. And under Ollie Marmel, they've continued to kind of do it. We saw it yesterday. But that's kind of getting a little bit off topic. Miles Michael is just talking about, well, the weak contact that kind of gets through. And context is important, is my my main reaction to this, because I titled the video, like, we're reacting to the comments. Is it a big deal? No, I don't think it's a huge deal that, you you know. But can it be frustrating to a fan base to hear, uh, you know, game one of 162 in a new season that's supposed to be all about being different than the struggles of last year when we did hear a lot about you know, whether you call it excuses or consider it excuse making or not, soft contact, weak contact that found its way into uh, outfield grass with some relative frequency last year against the pitching staff. Um, that was kind of a point of frustration, I think, for Cardinals fans. So to hear about it basically day one of the season, inning one of the season, um, but in the same game that your starter who's talking about the weak contact, as you heard there, also gave up a couple of home runs. It's kind of like, you know, and he did say he didn't like the uh, location on the pitch to Mookie Betts, you know, middle end fastball that he was looking for. I talked on B-Shape Daily earlier today about how I think because, uh, you know, the location wasn't middle middle, but it was it was in the wheelhouse if the guy is looking for 92 in. And he certainly seemed to be hunting for that pitch, uh, first pitch and got it. So that's sort of the, uh, the, the corollary to that. But uh, in terms of whether it's a big deal to hear Miles Michaelis talking about weak contact, it's going to be up to the interpretation, I think, of every fan. I, I would say, though. For me, and at least when you get the context a little bit, not overreacting would be probably preferential. But at the same time, I've also seen some commentary that it's like, look, why are people telling us not to overreact when this is not just like it's some brand new thing where the Cardinals lose 7-1 to and they have a bad first game? This whole 2023 season was that way. And so to then not contextualize it that way and say, look, yes, it's a new season, but if I'm one in Cardinal Nation that views 
that this roster isn't necessarily much better than it was last year, that the changes made weren't substantial enough to make this team better. And you look at Michaelis as a guy that last year gave him innings, gave him 200 innings, but didn't have a, a sterling ERA and didn't have a great year. And now he's your day one starter, even considering that Sonny Gray is on the injured list and those things happen. Um, the front office didn't improve the rotation such that they were able to have maybe a, a better option than Michaelis for day one uh, against a lefty loaded Dodgers lineup against a Michaelis who tends to pitch to contact with, with some frequency. He did have five strikeouts in four and a third deserves credit for like the K rate was, was good yesterday. Five, again, you want more innings pitched, but five K's in four and a third. That's, you know, that's pretty good in terms of, you know, nine K's per nine is the kind of the magic number we talked about with, with guys like Lance Lynn and you want Sonny Gray to exceed that. And hopefully, um, that's something that Steven Matz can do as well in the rotation this year. But typically you expect Miles Michaelis to be a guy who does pitch to contact. And so, you know, as a result of that, I, I think you would be looking at this situation and saying maybe not the best matchup uh, for, for Michaelis against the Dodgers. And yet that's the guy that the Cardinals, um, for better or worse, are going with on day one. And it's not anything against Miles Michaelis to say, like, that might not be the the thing that Cardinals fans would have hoped to see after an offseason where they said, we got to get different, we got to get better in the rotation. But Miles Michaelis, I think after a great spring, certainly of the options that were healthy, earned the opportunity. And so it doesn't go well, and you're left to wonder, like, how much does it matter that Cardinals fans are kind of reeling here after one game? I'm not going to say you're overreacting. I understand that there was frustration already before game one. And as I mentioned on B-Shafe Daily a little bit, that – first game losing seven to one kind of confirms your priors. If you were worried about the Cardinals, um, you, you saw yesterday's game and you said, yep, see, that's kind of what we were talking about. What we feared could be the case, especially when you stack up against quality opponents like the Dodgers, which the Cardinals are, uh, excuse me, of course, having to do in game one and uh, the first four games of the season in, in this series, by the way, Apple TV tonight, if you're watching this, uh, this might be a video that people watch after the game, maybe over the weekend. Um, but if, if it hasn't happened yet, Friday night is the Apple game. So prepare accordingly. Um, for that, But one other element of the context that I wanted to provide from the Michaelis quotes when he's talking about the weak contact, um, and, and there, there was more, so again, make sure you check out the video. Bally Sports uh, Midwest tweeted it out. But this was the quote that I said all the beat writers seem to tweet out the exact same quote. Um, and, I, and I regrettably don't have the exact question, but I'm going to read it from Jeff Jones's timeline because at first, um, Jeff put that Michaelis on the challenge of his first start after a, of his start after a long first. So they're asking about the first inning specifically, which is, you know, useful context. He said, quote, I'll, and, and let me know, I'm just going to read the quote. I'm not going to give you what to look for at the beginning of the quote, but I'm going to read the quote and you tell me what stands out um, or I'll, I'll tell you, but in your head, think about what stands out. If there's anything interesting about this quote that might kind of suggest to you, Hey, maybe we don't take it at total face value or um, don't take it too much to heart based on what Miles is saying. Quote, I'll take the weak contact all day. Do I think they're going to bloop in 10 hits in a row? Probably not. So I'll play the Vegas odds. I'll roll the dice. I'll bet on that all day. That weak contact's going to turn into outs, is the quote from Miles Michaelis. So, yes, he's being asked about, hey, it was tough. You had a long, lot of pitches in the first inning. What was the challenge of that? And he's basically saying, look, the first inning was long because of weak contact. He's not saying... I got screwed and we had a bad game. I had a bad game because of weak contact and it's just, uh, you know, bad luck. He's saying the first inning itself, 29 pitches, I think it was something to that effect, ends up kind of turning into a situation where now he's chasing the game a little bit from a pitch count perspective. And that's the question that he's answering. I want to find it exactly from Jeff. He said, for the record, the weak contact to which Michaelis is referring here in a question about the first inning only is the Freeman single, which rolled through the drawn in infield, 86 exit below, a 120 expected batting average. Um, just a just a dinker that was put in the right spot, helped out by the fact that the Cardinals had the infield drawn in. But it was about the first inning specifically. That's the context. When, some, when, when reporters are going to put a, a tweet on Twitter and it's going to have a quote from a player, a lot of times I think our eyes just kind of glaze over the context and we go right to the quote and go, oh my gosh, this guy's complaining about soft contact again. I am guilty of this because I saw Jeff's tweet, I retweeted it, and then kind of realized, all right, maybe not as big of a deal as as by just retweeting it and saying, oh, here we go with the soft contact again. Like, I fell into the trap, and it's not that I was being baited into it. I think, you know, again, I read that Jeff's tweet said he's asked about the first inning. That was the context, and so that's the reason that he's answering about soft contact. It's not like Miles Michaelis necessarily came to uh, the podium, or not really a podium, but in front of his locker in the visitor's clubhouse 
and said, I want to tell you guys about this weak contact. I think he was asked about it, and so he's answering a question about, you know, with the context of that first inning. In this quote, I didn't see on the Bally's video. I, I, I skimmed it a little bit, so maybe it was in there. I just missed it. But I think it may have been toward the beginning of the session, either toward the beginning or the end. Uh, but you heard in Miles' quote there that was on the Bally video where he said, all jokes aside, makes me wonder if this quote about Vegas and rolling the dice was first and then they maybe it clips and then starts the, the video that Bally posted right thereafter where he says, all jokes aside. Because to me, after rereading it a couple of times and kind of understanding the context, you go, oh, Michaelis is maybe just kind of having a little bit of fun here. References to Vegas and gambling, and I'd bet on that. I'd roll the dice. I think he might just be doing a like a, a veiled Otani joke. Like it could be as simple as that, that he's kind of just having a little bit of fun uh, referencing, you know, the obvious situation going on with the Dodgers superstar. And that his commentary about soft contact, while it is probably something that was on his mind within the context of the first inning, maybe not blaming the whole game for it, because he even said, I'd like to have those home runs back. And then later in the video, he talks about uh, the video that Bally's posted to their Twitter, talks about the pitch to Mookie is one that he, you know, he didn't he didn't like the decision, the location, the way um, the way he went about that, even though I had said, well, it wasn't like it was middle-middle, but it was still in on the hands, but in the strike zone. And you probably, if you're going to throw that pitch, you want to miss in almost and try and jam the hitter if he's going to swing at it, have it run in on his hands and have that be something that you can kind of hang your head on. Whereas it, it got probably too much of the plate for the location. And he, so he took, um, not credit for that, but uh, what do you call it? Took responsibility for that, owned up to that and said, yeah, that was, you know, pitch that I went back. But it was interesting too, to hear the part about the, in that video, I played the audio from on the, on this podcast where he's talking about the Freeman home run. He said, I didn't really think he got all of it. It's like, all right. But Michael is, honestly, he's a guy that he kind of tells it like it is or like he believes it is. He's not giving you anything in terms of trying to be disingenuous there. He's He, he could have, you know, colored it up and said, oh, yeah, you know, Freddie really just put a great swing on. But he kind of – his thoughts are, you know, I didn't really think initially that he had gotten all of it and <clears throat> it sort of carried out and, and that was the result of it. So you're kind of getting what you see. Um, in terms of what Miles Michaelis actually, I think, thinks about a given scenario. And he's candid in that way. At times, he won't be. At times, you'll be able to tell, like, he's almost reading from his own script in his mind because there's a thing that he may not want to talk about um, because doing so could get you get you fined or get you whatever. But in this instance, I think he's not going, oh, boy, how is this going to be perceived? He's like, you know, I didn't have the best of games. Here's kind of how I viewed it. And it was some weak contact that extended the first inning would like a couple of pitches back there. I didn't think Freddie, you know, maybe got all of it, but he did and uh, put a sw- put a good swing on it. Like whatever he's saying there, I think the the beauty is going to be in the eye of the beholder or the ear of the beholder in this case. The beholder uh, is many Cardinals fans who are going, here we go again. It just feels like excuse making. When in reality, like guys being asked to describe his outing, he's asked about elements of his outing and he gives his pretty candid responses, I think, in most cases. So that's sort of my general reaction to it. And of course, the, <clears throat> the quote about, Soft contact with all the Vegas references, I think it's allusion to Otani. It really looks like it. A little bit funny. I think it's actually kind of clever. He's had all the commentary about Midwestern farmers and all these things about, you know, we're the Midwestern farmers. The Dodgers are, you know, the checkbook baseball and all these things. And he's he even said, you know, if if I end up having to to eat blank or telling I could tell them to eat blank, tell all the doubters to eat blank, but in the off chance that they're right and I'm wrong, I'll look pretty dumb. So I, you know, I'd like to say that, but in reality, um, you know, I can't really say, yeah, eat blank because maybe the Cardinals will be bad and then he would look foolish in the aftermath. But by even talking through that, right, Miles is a smart guy. He knows like, all right, I've kind of put this out to the universe. So he's putting some bulletin board material out there. But do the Dodgers really need it? The Dodgers don't need bulletin board material. They are, uh, you know, MLB win total 102 and a half or whatever it is on the different sports books. Like they're that team for a reason. I don't know if they'll end up winning that many games, but they are the, the odds on favor to uh, to do all the things in the National League and in Major League Baseball this year because of the the juggernaut that they have built. Earth, Earth's Mightiest Heroes is what I keep calling them uh, because they do kind of have a team of superheroes. It feels like with what guys like Freeman and Otani and Mookie Betts and others are are able to do out on a baseball field. So for Miles Michaelis, I think the, the too-long-didn't-read version is it's not that deep. Um, but I know that Cardinals fans are, are prone to take some things uh, to heart right now because it doesn't look good, and it didn't look good last year. And many of you are looking at this going, I didn't see anything in the offseason that changes that, and I certainly didn't see anything on day one that changes what I thought about the team coming in. 
So can understand maybe all thoughts on this, but what was your reaction to the Miles Michaelis kind of leaning a little bit on the soft contact uh, argument after the game? My personal take, not a big deal at all. And honestly, to be expected when you consider the context of the questions he's being asked, when you're asked about a soft contact situation, you know, you're going to respond to it. Or you're asked, hey, what about that long first inning? You say, well, it wouldn't have been as long if 86 miles per hour with a 120 expected batting average doesn't get through the drawn in infield. And so those kinds of things are just, I think, natural to talk about after a game like that. But let me know in the uh, YouTube comment section below what you think of it, Cardinals fans. Does it bother you? Does it bug you? Is it something you wish the pitchers wouldn't do? Do you wish that they would would go into their post-game scrum after one game of 162 and just offer contrition and just say, I'm sorry, I'm the worst? Um, I say that a little tongue-in-cheek because I do think there's an element to, like, these are people that after one game, it's I know that you're coming off of a season where we kind of said all the same things. April was bad, and everybody said, oh, it's early. And then next thing you knew, you know, it wasn't early anymore. So I think Cardinals fans a little bit on this topic are preconditioned to go, I, I was told last time it was early, so I'm on high alert for it. Tough schedule to begin the season, be darned. Like, I, I, I do think these things matter. So if that's where you stand as a Cardinals fan, uh, let me know in the YouTube comment section below, or let me know if you're not worried at all about yesterday and you're not bothered by Miles' comments. And if you kind of think like I do that the the Otani, what I believe to be kind of an Otani poke, uh, was was kind of funny and clever because that's where I come down on it. Not a big deal to me, but I can understand maybe how some Cardinals fans might feel differently. So if that's you, let me know in the comments section below and make sure to hit that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. I'm mirrored here, so I can't, I don't know if I can, is that, oh, I'm off screen. Boom, right there. Subscribe to the Brendan Schaefer St. Louis Cardinals writer YouTube channel. Appreciate you guys, as always, for watching and listening to the content on the channel, and we will talk to you next time. Peace.